Ahaya in the name of Yeshaya. Uh, we thank you all for uh, for tuning in to our our uh, lessons for the Sabbath. We're going to try to make this efficient and some key information in which everyone could grow and find out what's going on in the world according to prophecy. All right. First and foremost, a lot of you uh, brothers and sisters out there might have been, uh, you're probably looking at the news, especially, especially within the United States. And there's a lot of distractive news going on in which you really don't understand what's happening. And they are diverting us away from Bible prophecy. Okay, especially if you are in the Western world, it's total distraction. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, we went over uh, the key details concerning the false flag they had in Boston and distracted everyone from laws that was passed within the United States that leads to martial law. And also, there was a lot of other things going on in the United States, like Israel was on their way into Syria to deal with Syria. Syria is being bombed as we speak. And this week, everyone within the United States is now, the news media have focused their attention on Charles Ramsey and some girl that was so-called kidnapped, mm -hmm. living in someone's house and having children with this guy and everything. And, and, and all of a sudden she's kidnapped and she was found. That's total distraction. Even them making videos with this guy, music videos and all that, total distraction, all right? Also, they had to get a new guy, a new face, and we were discussing this, a new face for the YouTube community to laugh at concerning our people now that Antoine Dotson have found mm -hmm. the knowledge of the truth. And he have over 500,000 subscribers and people linking into him, over half a million people linking into him dealing with this confusion that he was dealing with before he found the truth. I'm not saying that, oh, I, I don't have the memories of my past, you know what I'm saying? Because I do, and I see it every day in my mind. But I'm trying to move away from that and become a better person, that's all. So now, I understand that you, you are reading the Bible and that you are now identifying as a Hebrew Israelite, is that true? Exactly. Is that true. mutually exclusive with being gay? Actually, no, it has nothing to do with that. It's just that the law, being a, it's just following the laws and the commandments. And that's for directly the chosen Hebrew Israelites, the, uh, the 12 lost sheep, the 12 tribes of the lost sheep. It's just, you just, it's just certain things in this world that true Israel just cannot do. And I understand that. I have a position. So now that they cannot use him as uh, a way of degrading society, and his influence is going to make many people examine themselves and come to the truth. Now that that have happened, they have gotten a new guy that they just got out of the way, Charles Ramsey. And blowing him up now to move him to the forefront and also in an effort to distract the population from the wars that's going on within the world. So today, we're going to try to focus on what prophecies that are going down right now while they're, distraction, while they're distracting the world through entertainment. All right. And the key thing that I wanted to speak of in prophecy is Syria. What is the importance of Syria according to the Bible prophecies now that we're here? And what's next? As you know, for years, We've been teaching, don't pay attention to North Korea. Don't pay attention to, uh, uh, don't pay attention to uh, North Korea, Russia, or any of the proxies that are being used through the Western world. To really focus on the prophecies concerning Iran. You understand? For years, I've been saying the same thing, not because it's me, because this is what the Bible tells us to focus on. Iran is the war you, th that will change everything in this earth. That's going to be the prophecy that changed everything from that day going forward. 
and Syria is leading up to the war against Iran. So of course they will put out distractions and have everyone looking at something different because who in the world, American citizens or other citizens otherwise, would agree to another unjust war in killing people? But some might ask, well, what do the Most High have to do this? Why would he allow this to happen to Syria? What does this all mean? Well, first of all, let me go into the Apocrypha. The King James Version Apocrypha. All right. I also have an annotated Apocrypha, which breaks down the Apocrypha in detail and have other scriptures that wasn't added, that wasn't included in the regular King James Apocrypha. But going directly to prophecy where we're standing right now. What does this mean? This war with Syria. Now everyone would like to point to Israel, which you can point to because they're behind every war in the earth. And they're doing it for an entirely different reason, but nonetheless, it's the most ties prophecies being fulfilled. The Zionists are doing it for imperialistic reasons. Uh, uh, when you call ethnic cleansing and whatever, they're dealing with and they're worshiped under Satan. See, you understand? So what they're trying to do is ethnic cleansing and make the world for themselves. That's their ideologies, believing that Satan, their Lord, will one day exalt them as God's chosen people. But they don't realize they're being utilized too. Because it's not going to work the way they're seeing it because the Most High have laid a wound under them. Let's get that out of the book of Obadiah. And I'm going to show you the wound and why the Zionists must war against every other country within the earth. So we're going strictly into Bible prophecy outside of the distractions. Let's go with the first verse. Uh, verse 1. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord Power, concerning Eden. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen, arise ye. And let us rise up against her in battle. And that ambassador is coming from Iran. And in and, and, and past prophecies, we were looking at Egypt, but this is deeper than Egypt. Because why? The last impending war that would rise up against Edom would be Persia or Iran today. And you notice all in the news when they talk about Mahmoud Ahmadinejad in Iran. They say that Iran is claiming to do things against Israel. Well, it's deeper than Israel. It's the prophecy between Edom and the Persians. The impending war that will lead to the release of God's people throughout the four corners of the earth. That's what's really going on outside of the imperialistic uh, Zionist agenda of the Jewish people. We know they want ethnic cleansing. We know that they are at war with everyone, but it's deeper than them just fighting people for imperialistic reasons. Why? They must do this for self-preservation. They must take down other countries to survive. It's going to show you that. Read the seventh verse. Verse seven. All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. That means all the people whom the UN and the Edomites were in confederate with or in bed with have brought them to the border of war. Because at one time they were all together against us. You understand? That's why they was in confederate together. In Psalms 83, it tells you that all nations came together to keep us from ever knowing that we were the children of Israel. You understand? But once they accomplished that, then it became a war on who would rule in the earth. And Edom double-crossed all the nations that was in confederate with them against us. They're getting all the spoils, opposed to all the other nations who have helped enslave us. They're getting all the credit, all the power, all the imperialistic uh, uh, spoils that come with being the head of the confederate. So now all the nations who were in agreement with them are now coming against them. We put this out last year that in the UN, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad actually started speaking of the enslavement of black people. And the slavery that was going on all over the earth when other nations 
would stay mum concerning that topic for years. Why are they speaking about it now? Because it's really about us. All the nations have agreed to stay on top. And in order to be on top, they would have to agree to fight against God's people. But once we all were subdued, then it was a war amongst them of who will, who, who will actually rule these people. So then you have the Jewish people going into the Middle East in 1948, claiming that they are fulfilling the prophecies of Israel, but not at all. They were there as a presence because they're Edom, Jacob's brother, staking claim to a promise that don't belong to them. And when they got there, they began to war against the other nations because these nations have the knowledge of who they are. They knew that the Jewish people had no right to the land. So, of course, you would have continual perpetual war after war against these people. So in self-preservation, they must deal with ethnic cleansing and the self-preservation of their hierarchy. And that's what these wars are about. On another level. Now, at the end of these wars, we are free. Now, listen to this clearly. Because of the immorality throughout the four corners of the earth, the Most High is also using these wars as an opportunity for everyone to choose the right side of righteousness and not fall into immorality. You, you do evil, break God's law, and those that control the earth will be able to utilize you and destroy you in this impending battle. You understand? So yes, the Most High allowing the allowing this to happen, but only those that fall into immorality will fall with the heads of Edom. And so they have Hollywood to teach you death, killing, immorality, homosexuality, incest, bestiality, destruction, killing, murder, on and on and on. They teach this with the society so that they can recruit out of the population people into their war. You understand? Because those that are following the Most High have a hedge on them, a protection that will not allow them to fall, even through all these perils. So you must volunteer yourself into their satanic army. Now, why is it Syria now? Well, Syria was once in agreement with Israel against us too. So now it's their time. Now it's their time. So they're going to go through the same downfall. They're going to go through the same downfall as Libya. They're going to go through the same downfall as these other countries. They're going to go through it. They're going to fall. But in the midst of this fall, Iran is sending thousands of troops over into Syria. Why? Because there's a pipeline that's going through the whole area into Afghanistan. And that's, and that's their life source. So that's going to lead to the last war of this earth before everything is blacked out, before everything changed all at once. This is what's going on leading into World War III. Everything is going to change in this earth when Iran begin this war, when they step into this war after Syria is taken down. Syria will never be the same after this, but they were in league with the nations against us. Let's get that first. Let's go ahead and get Psalms 83. And then we go into second edge of the 16th chapter and read about the destruction of Syria. Now, mind you, all these lands at one time belonged to us. Parts of Damascus belongs to us. Israel was ours. All these nations were in agreement to destroy us. Now, you must pay the piper. What goes around comes around. You had to know at one point these same rogue nations who was in confederate against us, to fight against us, would, would turn on you. Why? If they would destroy, demoralize, and kill God's people, 